From the Earth to the Moon and Around the Moon by Jules Verne. So both of these books are part of a series I'm doing called The Masterpieces of Science Fiction. And these are some of the oldest books on the list. From the Earth to the Moon was copyright 1865. And to put that in a little context, that's the year the Civil War ended, which happens to be kind of part of the plot of this book. And then Around the Moon, which is the sequel, was copyright 1869. And Jules Verne was French, and these were originally written in French, and so English translations came out, I think, just a few years after that. Now, I've read these books before. I knew kind of what I was getting into. I wasn't sure I wanted to actually read them again, so I listened to both of these in audiobook. I got them from my library for free. They were really well done. And if anyone's on the fence about audiobooks, I think these are really good candidates to at least try it. Even if you probably haven't read it, they're just straightforward and descriptive enough and kind of linear that it's not that confusing and it's it was really easy for me to comprehend the whole way through. But also I had read them before. Now let's get into a little bit of history of Jules Verne. You know, these books came out, like I said, 1865, 1869. This is a civil war just ended. Einstein, I don't think was even born yet, or maybe right around that time. And, you know, these are very influential books. They might be hard for a modern reader to go back and try to read these, but if you do, I think it will give you a little bit more context of the whole genre, you know, as a whole. You can see the influence that these books had on future authors. And I think these books also not only laid the groundwork for other authors to come in and write works on top of some of these ideas, but I think these also educated the public because there's chapters in here that describe you know, lunar orbital mechanics that I'm not sure people in the 1800s fully understood. I bet you you could go on the street today and ask people some basic questions about the moon and they wouldn't even understand what's going on there. So these, these are very influential books and Jules Verne is just a really good writer for his time. They do read a little dated for a modern reader, but you got to understand the context and where these came from. So... With that out of the way, let's just go ahead and kind of get into the plot of these books. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these. These books are old. Most people have probably read them. I'm going to try to be spoiler free because there is a pretty cool um, little plot twist at the end of the first book, From the Earth to the Moon. So in this book, we start off with the Baltimore Gun Club. And they're kind of the theme for these two books plus one more. And these are some you know, cannon and gun enthusiasts that are kind of bored now that the Civil War has ended and they're looking for, you know, they're putting their sights on something else. So the President Barbicane comes up with this idea to try to shoot a projectile up to the moon. And no one knows if there's people on the moon. They're thinking that if there are people on the moon, maybe they'll be able to see this and it'll be kind of our, our first hand wave to them from Earth, and maybe we can start some sort of communication. So that's the premise of the book. That's what kind of motivates everyone to undergo this task. So the, you get a chapter that describes orbital mechanics of the Earth and the Moon. You get, from there you get into almost like an engineering exercise of how you would design a cannon to shoot a projectile up to the moon because this is even before the idea of like a rocket was really that understood you you know you what were you gonna burn we really didn't have an understanding of oil and jet fuel of course at that time so the idea was a cannon and so you go through these engineering exercises of coming up with weights and velocities and then going back and through an iterative process and, and honing it down. And then you get to the point where you're going to start constructing this thing and even coming up with the best place on the planet 
to position this thing because they they want the cannon to shoot straight up in the air so there's no forces that are going to go you know at any angles and so a lot of thought was really put into how this would actually take place looking back it's a horrible idea to try to launch a projectile from a cannon to the moon but you know he was he was working with what he had and he put together a pretty good story based on this so somewhere along the construction we get this French explorer who comes along and says you know what this thing's hollow I want to ride in it and it kind of uh, challenges some of the other team members in a way and so we get three people who decide to enter this this cannonball in a way and get shot up to the moon and that's kind of the the main gist of the the whole first book here from the earth to the moon and at the end of this book they you know they actually launch the rocket and this is where a or it's not a rocket they launch this projectile up to the moon and there's a slight complication that happens and at the end of the book they tell you what the complication is they explain what happened but you never get any point of view from the three men inside this projectile um, once once they get shot up to the moon you kind of don't hear from them at all you just kind of from from earth they understand like what's what happens now this book around the moon this is what describes from the point of view of the three astronauts in a way their whole experience from from takeoff through this kind of debacle that they have to go through and then ultimately you kind of learn what their ultimate fate is if they're going to get out of this circumstance so it was you know it's it's a good book this the second book it's it's more from the point of view of these three men and it's a lot of conversations it's it's kind of silly you know they when they originally got into this thing to go up there they didn't have a plan to how they were going to land on the moon um, how they were going to get back to the earth none of that stuff was discussed so there, there's some issues with this book but if if you understand the the context of when it was written and and what it was trying to do for the time then you can appreciate it for what it is so these books are good i think jules verne has written better books. I liked 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea better. Um, I think I might have read one other of his books, I can't remember, but every once in a while I might come back to one of these. I might try some more on audiobook as well. But like I said, if you want to understand some of the foundations of science fiction and kind of paint this whole picture in your head of how this, this whole thing started, then you should probably at some point go visit these books and and if you want, check them out on audiobook like I did. They're pretty good in that in that format. So once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.